Welcome to our lecture online. In this particular example, we have a very interesting concept regarding the buoyancy force. Notice that we have a container that has water in it. There's a cork floating at the top. The cross-sectional area of the cork at the top is 10 square centimeters, and the mass of the cork is 15 grams. We have a string attached to the cork, which is 4 centimeters long. At the bottom of the string, we have an aluminum a cylinder which has a mass of 25 grams and a cross-sectional area of 2 centimeters squared. The aluminum cylinder fits through a tight sealed uh, hole at the bottom so that no water can leak out, but it's free to slide up or down. Now what we're trying to find is the distance from the water level to the bottom of the cork. Hmm, how do we figure that out? Well, it turns out since it's a static situation, all the forces on the cork and aluminum added together should add up to zero. In other words, the sum of the forces in the y direction should add up to zero. But first, of course, we need to find what those forces are. Well, first of all, we have the buoyancy force on the cork, like this, pushing the cork upward. Then we have the weight of the cork, m cork g, the weight of the cork pulling down. We have the weight on the aluminum pulling down, and we have the water pressure on top of the aluminum pushing down as well. So this force right here, that would be equal to the force, which is equal to the pressure times the cross-sectional area. Now, strangely enough, there's no buoyancy force on the aluminum cylinder. Even though the cylinder is displacing water, and you know that the definition, the buoyancy force equals to the weight of the displaced liquid. In this case, there is no buoyancy force because there's no force pushing at the bottom. There's no liquid at the bottom. So in order to have buoyancy force, you must also have liquid at the bottom pushing up. So you have liquid on the top pushing down, but no liquid at the bottom pushing up. You have liquid on the side pushing this way, of course, that doesn't buoy anything. You need to have the force at the bottom since there's no liquid there, no buoyancy force. And that's the key to this problem. So what we're going to do now is add up all the forces in the y direction. So the sum of the forces in the y direction equals, well, it equals zero, and we have the buoyancy force pushing up on the cork minus the weight of the cork minus the weight of the aluminum and minus the pressure times area of the liquid on top of the aluminum. And all that together adds up to zero. So now we're supposed to find this distance right here, the distance from the water line to the bottom of the cork. So we need to find an expression in terms of x. So let's plug in everything that we know and see if we get the x there. So zero equals the buoyancy force on the cork. Well, that would be the density of the liquid times the volume of the displaced liquid times g. So that would be the buoyancy force on the cork, where that's the volume of liquid displaced by this portion of the cork. Then minus the mass of the cork times g, minus the mass of the aluminum times g, and minus the pressure times the area. Now the pressure at this point, that would be the, uh, let's see here, that would be the density of the liquid times g times the distance from the water level to here, that would be x plus 4 centimeters. And we multiply the times the cross-sectional area of the cork, area, uh, not of the cork, but of the aluminum. There we go. So now notice, if we then do one more transformation, we find the volume of the liquid here, so we had 0 is equal to the density of the liquid, times the volume of the liquid, which is the area of the cork, times the height, which is x, times g, minus m sub c g, minus m aluminum g, and then minus the density of the liquid, g times x plus 4, times the area of the aluminum. There we go. And now when you take a look at it, we have an x here, we have an x there, so now all we have to do is solve that equation for the variable x, and then we should get the right value there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this times this and move it to the right, that makes that positive, so we have the density of the liquid times g times x 
times area of the aluminum. That would be this times that. And then this goes to the left side, so that's minus the density of the liquid times A sub C times X times G. And then we have equals minus the mass of the cork minus the mass of the aluminum times G. And then minus, we have the density of the liquid, G times 4 times the cross-section area of the aluminum. There you go. And then, of course, one more thing. This is equal to 0. We notice that there's a G in every term, so we can get rid of all the Gs. Now here, notice, we have the density times x times a, the density times x times a. This is the area of the cork. This is the area of the aluminum. Since the area of the cork is bigger than the area of aluminum, this will be a negative number. And then you see all the negatives there. That's a negative number, so we can switch that around and turn that positive. So let's continue over here. We'll, we'll uh, factor out an x. So we have x times, we're going to write this one first because we want to make that positive. So the density of the liquid times the cross-section area of the cork minus the density of the liquid times the cross-sectional area of the aluminum. That's now a positive quantity is equal to, make all this positive, the mass of the cork plus the mass of the aluminum plus the density of the liquid times 4, the density of the liquid times 4 times the cross-sectional area of the aluminum. There we go. Now you might have noticed that all the units are in grams, centimeters, no seconds, but uh, it sounds like it's CGS units. So these are the, what we call the CGS units, where we have C stands for um, centimeters, G stands for grams, and S stands for seconds. So that's the CGS units. So if we leave everything in CGS units, our answer will come out in CGS units or centimeters. Now we solve for X. We have X is equal to mass of the cork plus mass of the aluminum plus the density of the liquid times 4 times the cross-section area of the aluminum all divided by the density of the liquid factored out times the area of the cork minus the area of the aluminum. There we go. Now we're ready to plug in all the, all the numbers. X is equal to the cork is 15 grams, aluminum is 25 grams, the density of the liquid would be 1 because it's water, 1 gram per cubic centimeter times 4, and the cross-sectional area of aluminum is 2, all divided by 1, times the quantity 10 minus 2. Okay, let's simplify that, see what we get. And of course, this would be in centimeters. So x is equal to 15 plus 25 is 40, plus 8, that's 48 at the top, divided by 10 minus 2, which is 8 at the bottom. So that would be centimeters, so that would be equal to 6 centimeters. So the answer is the bottom of the cork will be six centimeters below the water level. And it's all about realizing there's no buoyancy force on the aluminum, just those other four forces. And that is how we do that.